All right, here we go. Welcome, everybody, to another episode. We are going to talk about the Landstar system tonight. This is something that's needed addressed. We just did a orientation with two new drivers, and we went over this, and we realized that what we put together for the... Uh, all right, you're sh screwing up our live stream, Larry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're supposed to have all your stuff turned down. <laughs> I fixed it. My all bad. Right, so... <clears throat> That's all right. So we did this uh, in orientation with two new drivers, and we figured it would be a great topic for everyone to to, to go over because there's some good stuff in here. Uh, so this is episode 79, Understanding the Landstar System. Bear with, <clears throat> excuse me, bear with us. We're using this new software, and it's got lots of bells and whistles, and I'm going to attempt not to screw it up. So Larry is in charge of the PowerPoint so we're just going to talk. So I've kind of got, you know, we're going to go, we're going to repeat some stuff here, but I want to be able to kind of cover some of the basics for people that may have just come across this video for the first time. So we are Blue Ribbon Logistical Solutions. We are a small fleet, uh, leased to Landstar. We have nine trucks. Our mission is to... Uh, train and mentor people that have a desire to be an owner operator that want to be self-employed but don't want to take on the risk that comes with buying a truck or leasing a truck uh, and so we bring them into our fleet give them a company driver job paid on a w-2 where everything's done correctly and then they can get into our truck and they can learn the system and how it works um, how, how to book loads, how to build relationships with agents, how to do maintenance, how to save, how to do accounting, how to do all that stuff. So Larry, why don't you, do you want to add anything to the basics of, of who Blue Ribbon is and how our relationship to Landstar? Well, you pretty much covered it. It's, uh, it's just a chance for people to earn while they learn. Instead of um, doing like most people do and go in debt to buy a truck, and usually the first truck is the wrong truck or too much truck or – not specced right or whatever. And then they come to Landstar and they're overwhelmed with all the choices that they now have and the freedoms that they were advertised that they would have when they came here. It's pretty overwhelming. And, uh, you know, we have a fairly significant turnover rate because of that. And so we've just decided to come up with a way to flatten the curve a little bit, to use a popular phrase right now, so that we can, um, uh, you know, let you come on and, and drive a truck that we know is spec for the job. We know is correct for the job. It, it's it's a model truck for you to model yourself after for your first purchase. And uh, and then we spend, you know, the first uh, months just um, teaching you how we do things. And then all you have to do is emulate us. And um, and then we help you uh, find a truck, buy a truck and and move on. So it, it's, a, it's a it's a mentoring program, but you you the thing that makes it work is you have to operate our truck as if it's your own. And um, people that successfully understand that and grasp that do very well. People that come here and think they're just going to have a job and drive a truck for now on, they don't work out. So because we want you to come in here and learn and move on. So we um, we actually tell people in our recruiting messages look we're not we're not hiring truck drivers you know we want to take people who want to learn how to become business people and trucking is the tool but the principles are gen are universal general they don't they they apply to trucking and anything else too for that matter so <clears throat> but yes that's what we're doing and we uh, like the landstar um umbrella that we work in um, because it allows us to do what we do without restrictions and without limitations. And, and um, you know, we, we love being at Landstar. We call them out when we think they need to be called out. But we haven't found anything that's any better. And um, so we, our program is designed to, to, for people to leave us when it's ready and go into business with Landstar as a BCO. And as long as they can keep their um, qualifications up, um, then that works out. So, one of the challenges that I have found when you you bring someone into this system, 
Um, it is so different from anything they've ever experienced as a company driver. And, um, you know, I, my transition went pretty well. I didn't have a lot of the challenges that other people had, um, you know, and I don't, I, I really can't account for that. I don't really know why I didn't struggle that much with it, but I've seen a lot of people really, really struggle. And so this part of our orientation is trying to get someone that's never been exposed to a system like this to understand the basics of how it works, what's real and what's not real. Um, and, and give them a, a better understanding of the freight market in general and how it works and then how the Landstar system works inside that. So you go ahead and take on, I'm going to put this uh, PowerPoint up on the screen and we can kind of go through these slides and then we'll talk about them. We, we put this together pretty quick, so we may, we may go back and forth a little bit. So, um, so let's start there. So that's uh, blue green. Let's go to the next one. Okay, yeah. Why don't you take this one? Well, I founded Blue Ribbon Logistical Solutions in 2013 when I came to Landstar. I won't go into all of my history, but I had trucks at at another company and doing FedEx dedicated and and um, brought them to Landstar one by one, starting in 2012, 2013. And so that's when I saw this opportunity to um, educate people, mentor them uh, in the Landstar system. Um, and so um, we, I, I came, I, I, I transitioned from being a fleet owner and, and just offering driving jobs to other people to this mentoring fleet where our primary um, our primary goal, our, our, our mission became, became uh, training, mentoring, and, and at the same time, um, providing jobs. But the jobs were there to teach people how to become owner-operators on their own. And um, it's grown from the four that I brought here in 2013. Now do we have nine. And, and um, our Outreach now has transitioned into this Blue Ribbon podcast and what we're doing right now. So it's um, it's it's actually grown beyond what we do with our own drivers. We're actually now sharing this with whoever wants to uh, tune in. So, okay, uh, let's see what we got next in the slides. Okay, so we I like to do this before we talk about Landstar because there's a little bit. Of, of broader understanding that we need to have of the of the market in general okay and that's the relationship between the shipper the carrier and the receiver too many times i see people come to landstar or, or any carrier for that matter they, they're the truck owner and they assume that the axis of the universe runs through the top of their head and that is a very very dangerous uh attitude to have because at any time, you've got to be able to put yourself in the shoes of the person you're trying to serve. Is it the shipper, the carrier, the broker, the receiver? All of these people play an equal role. Without shippers, there's no receivers. Without receivers, there's no shippers. Um, the, the brokers and the carriers have a significant and important role, but it's just as important as the shipper and the carrier. So hit the next slide. In most cases... Uh, shippers pay the shipping cost. So they're the ones paying the bill. And it's important to know who is paying the bill when you're trying to do business. Um, the closer you can get me as an operator or an owner to the shipper, the person paying the bill, the better off we're both going to be. They're going to get better service and I'm going to make more money. The more people we put between us, then the harder it is for us to really connect and serve one another in a, in a way that is beneficial to the both of them and that they get maximum service and that I get maximum money because that's what I'm here for, to make money. It's not a hobby. Uh, next slide. Is, I'm trying to remember. Okay, shippers have a choice. Now, back in the old days before deregulation, a lot of shippers would have their own trucks. They would have their own fleet to take care of their freight. Uh, and then we got the Motor Carrier Act of 1980 and opened the market up to where anybody could be a carrier. 
so they can dir- contract directly with a carrier and only have to worry about shipping one way. They don't have to worry about what happens to the truck when it delivers their load. Or they can use a broker in order to con- con- connect with a carrier. So you have this broader relationship in the market. Shippers are looking for trucks. They'll either go out and find them on their own or they'll find a broker or a carrier will come and solicit them and say, hey, I have X number of trucks. This is what I can do. I want your business, um, and, and I have the capacity to cover what it is you need. If they go to a broker, they don't want to deal with that. They want to pick up the phone and say, I have X number of loads to move on these days. I want you to go find a truck because I don't want to mess with it. Just send me a truck on the day that I need it, and that's where the broker comes in. Um, now I didn't look this up and I'm going to look it up in real time. I'm going to do, I'm going to just Google average broker fee. Let's see if that comes up. Uh, I'm going to change that to percentage because there we go. I believe it's 15%, but I wanted to just, uh, average freight. 13.2%. Here's from FreightWaves.com. Wait for this to load. This is from December 3rd of 2019. Freight brokers, how does your pay rank against your peers? Um, So it looks like the the median is about 13%. Okay. So anytime a shipper has a load that goes out, and they write a check, thirteen. if they're using a broker, on average, about 13% of that money is going to go to the broker. The rest goes to the truck or to the carrier. Um, the idea, I find it personally preposterous when people think that, that when rates either go up or go down, that people think brokers are just taking more of the money. Again, put yourself in the position of a shipper. Shippers are able to look at trends of the market. Shippers are able to look and see, uh, hey, the market is, is, is in this condition, and so I shouldn't have to pay as much. And so they're going to go out into the market to the, to the broker and say, well, you need to get me a better rate. Well, the broker is still going to make, on average, about 13%. This will come in later to our discussion about the benefits of being at Landstar, but you have to understand the relationship between the shipper, the broker, the carrier, and the receiver. Uh, What's our next slide? Okay. Uh, This is a book that I highly recommend by Mark Levinson called The Box, How the Shipping Container Made the World Smaller and the World Economy Bigger. I listen to this book on audio. It is very heavy in details. It's a research project. Um, it's deep, right? There's a lot of numbers in this thing, but you need to understand the historical significance of the market uh, or of the industry that you work in. And this book does a fantastic job of giving you the historical context of how we got from uh, trucks and planes and boats being loaded by hand to being loaded on containers and, and how the technology changed. But, um, you need to go download, if you're a driver, you need to go download this book and you need to listen to it because it's going to give you some important co- historical context that you need to know. All right, what's next? Okay. You want to take this or you want me to? No, oh, you're doing a great job. I'm enjoying listening to you. <laughs> okay. Knock yourself out. All right, least first. I'll thing. jump in if I need to. How's that? Okay, go ahead. All right. So operating authority is a motor carrier's right to operate a commercial motor vehicle to transport goods or passengers for hire. Okay, so as we know now, after the Motor Carrier Act of 1980, anybody can go to the government and fill out the pages and and all the paperwork and become a carrier and get an authority. Landstar is a carrier. The BCOs, the business capacity owners, operate under the authority granted to Landstar by the government. It is vitally important to understand the difference between what it means to be a carrier and be leased to a carrier. Now, a lot of this goes to the the video that I did on our channel. It's our most popular video on does Landstar really take 35% of my money? And I get into a lot of the detail there about 
um, who pays for what, because there's a lot of my money that's going to be used to pay for things. If I'm a carrier, I have to pay for things. When I'm leased to a carrier, there's certain things that I don't have to pay for. The carrier is responsible for that, and they have to be compensated for whatever it costs for the administrative cost or the actual cost of the, of the service that they're providing. What's our next slide? Every, okay, every carrier, if you're one truck or if you are swift with 50,000 trucks or however many trucks they have now, every car carrier must have cargo liability, bobtail, and physical damage insurance. Every carrier must have a drug testing program or membership in a drug testing consortium. Every carrier must have a billing and collection department or they must do billing and collection or have to use a factoring company. They have to maintain compliance of all permits and legal requirements. They have to file quarterly after reports. They have to have RRP base plates and they have to have access to load boards and customers. And then they have to have a trailer. They have to have equipment. Um, so if you're a one truck carrier, you are looked at by the government in the exact same light as SWIFT. Um, you don't get an asterisk that says, oh, well, I mean, he's only got one truck. He, you know, he doesn't have to keep up as much as this stuff as Swift does. No, you are viewed in the exact same light. They have <clears throat> got big, giant buildings full of people to take, care, to take care of all of these reporting requirements. If you're a one-truck carrier, you have to do all this yourself. Now, I'm not saying you can't. There's lots of people that do. Uh, but even at nine trucks, we are not willing to trade the services that we receive from Landstar for the risk and the time and the expense that we would have to spend doing it ourselves. It's hard enough to keep up with nine trucks as it is, and that's with Landstar doing most of the work. All right, what's next? Okay, now this is where this is where Larry was born <laughs> to shine. He's talking about the Landstar system. Don't you know it? Yeah. <clears throat> well, what makes Landstar unique is that it's a considered a light asset company in that it doesn't have tractors and doesn't have very many trailers, a few um, platform based specialized trailers. But uh, it's, it's basically just a cooperative relationship between 10,000 owner operators that they call BCOs and it used to be 1400. I, I'm assuming it's somewhere in that range right now. Independent contractor, freight brokers, agents, actually not brokers. Landstar is the broker. That's a common misconception. Just like none of the owner operators are under their authority. Neither, none of the agents are. The, we work under Landstar's operating authority, either it be in way or ranger. And the same thing for the agents. They run under the broker authority of either Inway or Ranger. Actually, there's a couple other ones, including LEA. But they provide the support services, the authorities, and this big umbrella that we all operate under. And the thing that makes it unique in our industry is that because of the fact that they're the referees, they are, you know, they're the ones that are... Um, you know, that this, um, this umbrella covers everyone equally. Um, the idea here is to promote mutual respect, fairness, and, of course, equal opportunity. And the point I like to make here when we're talking about this is that everyone came comes to Landstar, came to Landstar, and they got the exact same thing. They, 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 they went to orientation. They got some, they got a book. They got some materials. They got some phone numbers. They got access to a load board. Uh, everybody came, it's almost like being born. You, everybody came in the world upside down and naked, you know, and that's kind of how you come to Landstar, you know, you're upside down and naked and everybody starts the same way. Nobody came with a shirt on or one shoe on, you know, everybody starts the same. It's equal opportunity. It's not guaranteed results. And that's the thing that makes this thing, uh, just a, a perfect example of the free market, you know, and that, Every, the opportunity is there for anybody, but the results are not guaranteed. The results strictly depend on how well you function in the system, how hard you want to work, and how smart you are at, at doing so. 
The uh, Landstar system is made up of three bubbles, um, the corporate, and we talked about the things that they provide already in the previous slide, but they've got all these departments that they skillfully manage. And so that when you're driving down a road as a BCO and you pull into a scale house, you don't have to worry about being put out of service because you forgot to do a government regu regulatory report last month. And so now you're no longer, you know, able to, uh, you know, to run. That, that's not going to happen, you know. Um, so the, the 10,000 BCOs, re, you know, are, are under that umbrella, but so are the agents. And what's unique about this, I, I get so, <laughs> I get so excited and, 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 uh, well, anyway, I, uh, I shake my head a hey, lot. I, when hey, I, hang on a sec. I'm getting some kind of rumble from your mic, like something's moving around or is there something hmm. touching it or. I don't think uh, so. Did it quit? Yeah, but it's like it, I just wanted to, it. It's just driving me crazy. Sorry, try. I'll try not to move. Okay. Um, but it's it the the fact that the agents and the BCOs both are equal in the eyes of 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 Glanstar Corporate. Um, what what's unique about this is that in the industry, typically, truck owners and broke freight brokers have a have a natural, um, uh, unfriendly relationship typically. Um, and, and of course there's a whole lot of mess about this right about the time the pandemic started with, uh, freight tra uh, broker or freight bill transparency and, and, and that sort of thing still going on for that matter, but there's a lack of trust in that transaction. Um, the agents think that the, that you know, the drivers make too much money. The drivers think the agents don't take them. They take too much money because they don't do anything except get out of bed and put their pajamas on. So there's this natural, you know, uh, conflict there that goes on. But the way that Landstar looks at it is that, you know, they recruited independent agents. They're not employees of, of, of Landstar. They've recruited drivers. They're not employees of Landstar. Each driver can do business the way he chooses. Each agent can do business the way he chooses. Now, you as an independent driver, you can decide whether you want to do business with an agent or you can decide that you don't want to. Same with agents. They can decide they want to do business with a particular BCO or they can decide they don't want to do business with any BCO. So that's, again, that, that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You know, you can't get mad at agents because they don't want to use a BCO when you as a BCO get mad at an agent and don't use one of them. So it, it's a it's a it's a level playing field. It's a free market. Um, Landstar keeps the, the score basically and makes sure that one doesn't take advantage of the other. But what's unique about this, though, is that um, one can't take advantage of the other one financially because the, neither one of the, the 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 BCOs nor the agents are in the income stream until after Landstar divvies up the money. So, you know, I, I hear this all the time. Well, you know, uh, the agent is, is, is taking too much money of this load. And, and that's just not, not possible. If the, if the agent raises the rate, he raises the rate for everybody. He can't raise the rate and keep more of it for himself and you not get more of it. Um, the same if he cuts the rate. If he cuts the rate, he's cutting his own throat j along with yours. So that's not, uh, that's not how this works. And, and that's one of the beautiful things about this system is that, you know, the Landstar does the billing, Landstar does the collections. Um, when they get paid, then we, we uh, as BCOs and, and, and the agents get paid simultaneously. Uh, we get 65%, the agent gets about 7.5% on, on average. So um, there's just not any way that you can, um, that you can mess with that because it, it, it's not possible. It, you know, the freight bill is sent by corporate, not by the agency. The, um, oh, what happened there? Oh, you went out of the full screen. Well, why? Oh, that's the end of our, that's, uh, that's our last slide. Oh, okay. We didn't put the rest of the slides. We didn't put the rest of them in. I can get to them if you give me just a second. Okay. 
working on the fly here, folks. Working on the fly. Forget all about. Well, I'll go ahead and talk about that building some more while you're doing that. You know, okay. the uh, the idea um, that uh, that an agent can put money in their pocket it, it's not possible. It it is it can't be done. The you know you hear all this oh they don't want to put it on a BCO because blah 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 y'all. It's not been, it doesn't benefit them in any way. Um, now, I don't know exactly what the terms are, but, you know, if, if, a, if a load goes on to, uh, an, say, an approved carrier as opposed to a BCO, um, and the approved carrier will do it for less and opens up the spread, Landstar takes more of the agent's money to disincentivize them from doing that. And then, of course, you have the market that uh, there's you know i know you believe there's all these people out here hauling for 50 cents a mile but they're just they're just not out there everybody is it's cutthroat everybody is trying to get more money um you know you you, you create these straw men that don't exist and then you you start using that as a as a, an excuse to try to not do business with somebody, it's just nonsense. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. You know, you've turned your critical thinking off. That's one of the beauties of the system is that you know what the customer's getting charged because you get a copy of the freight bill. You're paid off of what uh, the freight bill is is issued and the agent is paid off of what the freight bill is issued there's no that the transparency is there so when you start comparing um what you were what you're paying at seven percent to the agent to go out and get the loads versus what you would have to spend if you were factoring uh, where you don't know what the customer's getting paid the shipper's not going to or the broker's not going to give you the information. They're going to tell you, uh, this load pays you 1000 bucks. You don't know what they've charged the customer. We know that on average it's going to be about 1320 You know, they're going to pay, they're going to charge the customer about 1320 if you're, or not, not 1320 I did that math wrong, 1130 If you're getting paid 1000 on average, uh, the, uh, the broker's charging them $1,150 or something, you know, about 15%. Uh, are you ready to go? You got your mm -hmm. back up? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the next slide was just revenue breakdown. I got nothing. Um, I just got a gray screen. Well, Is your computer being dumb? I don't know. I can see it. Oh, I'm sharing. Huh. Well... I just stopped sharing, and now let me share again. See what happened. Okay. <clears throat> While we're doing that, I've got to put Niven's comment up here because it's hilarious. Blue ribbon lunatistics, love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I know what's. Wrong. I see what's wrong. I see what's wrong. I was sharing the wrong. You should oh, see it now. Okay. There we go. All right, there you go. Now we're back in business. So now we're in business. So this is, uh, well, let's see here. Let's, let me, there we go. So under the terms of your contract, you're going to receive 65% of the line haul, 100% of any accessorial, and 100% of the fuel surcharge. Um, wait a minute. Say that, wait a minute. Say that again right. You, you said that wrong. You said that backwards. Accessories are either paid a percentage or 100%, depending on the type. Depending on the type. Well, okay. I'm mean, sorry. You're right. So there's two different kinds of accessories at Landstar. There's there's accessorial at, at percentage and accessorial that's at 100%. And basically, it involves if you do the work, it's 100%. If it's just um, added to, uh, like for stop pay or, or hazmat, th things like that, where you're really not doing anything any different, then it's, uh, it's at percentage. Um, and that, that, 
that sounds tricky, but it's it, it's really not all that. Just keep think about it this way: if you have to get back in the trailer and work, you're going to get 100. Uh, percent If you're not, you're going to get 65. percent So that's just how that works. But um, here's here's the here's the the thing that 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 gets in our crawl is that we go back to this previous slide. BCOs receive 65 percent of the line haul and 100 percent of most everything else. Okay. So it it never it never was the BCO the BCO never ever got a hundred percent they didn't give back thirty five percent of their money to Landstar in exchange for the things Landstar does it was never their money to begin with the 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 customer paid Landstar a hundred percent of whatever the freight bill was then it got divvied up and the and the the, the BCO on average gets about 69 point something percent if you average in the fact that it fuels 100 percent. The agent's going or the uh, agent's going to get about seven and a half percent. The trailer's going to get about seven percent because remember Landstar doesn't own the trailers. Okay, so when you when you factor all that out, that 35 percent is not 35 percent at all, and uh, and it never was the BCOs to give back. That's the thing that that. I just don't understand how people come up with this. Well, Landstar takes 35% of my money. Well, no, they don't. You signed a contract saying you would come here to work for Landstar and you would willingly take 65% of the revenue as, as, as the condition of your lease. It was never your money to begin with. It was the customer's money. You had agreed to take the load on the load board for a published dollar amount that you could, with a little bit of simple math, could figure out before you took the load exactly what you were going to get. And, and no, at no point did you ever get 100% of that and have to give 35% back. That's just complete complete bullshit. Let's just call it what it is. So <laughs> if you're going to whine about it, read your contract and don't come here, okay? That, we right. didn't, that, that didn't get changed after you signed on. You didn't come to orientation and haul four or five loads, and then all of a sudden we started taking this. That's just not how it works, okay? If, if that bothered you, then don't come. All right. Uh, we got a pretty good deal going on here. Okay. If you want to come in here and screw it up, just go back to Swift. We don't really need you here screwing this deal up. Okay. Can so you imagine, can you imagine if BCOs had to cut a comm check over Friday for 35% and hand it back to Landstar? <laughs> <laughs> can you, well, I don't know, I'm not going to say that, but, right. uh, but, but Chris did a really, really good uh, episode about this. Like you said, it's our most popular, most viewed episode we've ever done but he goes into great detail about that you can just google it does Landstar take 35 percent on uh on youtube and and you'll see it it's 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 a very he goes into depth about what the 35 percent and, he, and here's what it does okay here's what here's why you're only getting 60 i'm going to say 69 percent because if you average in the 65 percent plus 100 percent of fuel surcharge and accessorials on whole it's about 69 point something percent that you're getting okay so for the for the 21 for the 31 percent that you're not getting, here's what you are getting. OK, and we're going back to this lease contractor versus own authority kind of deal. You're getting control. You're getting to use a, a company controlled trailer that you don't have to pay for maintenance on. OK, anything that goes wrong with it. Landstar is going to fix it. You uh, here's a big one. OK, go out here and haul freight under your own authority for a broker and wait to get paid. Because that can be anywhere from 30 to 90 days to never, ever getting paid. And people raise their eyebrows about that. But it happens every day. You know, if, if you've ever heard of filing on the bond, what that means is that I didn't get paid and I had to file against that broker's bond uh, to, to try to get paid. And so at Landstar, we get paid every week for everything we did the week before, assuming we don't screw the paperwork up. It's not subject to, to being uh, to being uh, taken back. It's uh, Landstar may not get paid for 90. They may never get paid, but that doesn't affect the fact that we get paid. They are the factoring company for the BCOs at no charge, at no percentage. All the insurance for the cargo and liability, anything that goes in that trailer, you're not paying for that insurance. The, the Landstar is. Um, we, because of the size of our fleet, we get very good rates on bobtail physical damage insurance that you have to buy because it's your tractor. Um, also, we get very good discounts from LCAP, on, especially on tires, 
but there's a whole list of stuff that they've um, negotiated discounts for. Before coming to Landstar, I was a Michelin B2B and a Michelin Advantage member. I only use Michelin tires, and I can't touch what I pay at Landstar for a tire. Um, we, we use super singles on, on our trucks and average cost out there is about $1,200 to $1,400 for one at Landstar. They're like 900, you know, so I can't, I, I couldn't touch that before coming to Landstar. Our fuel network, our, our, our fuel discounts are unmatched in the industry. I had, I've had several of them call me, wanting me to take their fuel cards, Nastic being one of them. And then I told them what, you know, what we were getting at Landstar. They said, never mind, we can't match that. Um, all the IFTA reporting and filing is provided for you. Um, the compliance department to make sure you're always legal. Now, sometimes that's a hassle because, you know, you've got to answer those emails and answer those phone calls because you're doing something that's out of compliance. But after all, they're just keeping you from getting in trouble. So even though it's a hassle, yeah. it's a hassle. It would be a bigger hassle if you didn't do it. And then, of course, all the agents in the Landstar load board. If you have your own authority, you have to pay for a load board subscription. That's not cheap. And then you don't have the referee between you and that broker. And now it's up to you. It's your negotiating powers, your, your abilities and your skills against theirs. And I'm going to say most of the time they probably uh, can out negotiate you. So here we don't have to worry about that. The rates are pretty much set. Once in a while, there'll be a negotiation. But for the most part, you know, the, the, the price on the board is the price, okay? And you don't have to worry about going through all that haggling. There it is. But that's what we're getting for giving up, if you want to use that word, the other percentage of the 100% that we don't get for hauling the load. You were going to say something, Chris? Yeah, uh, I want to. One thing I want to touch on that we're going to do a separate video on third party, uh, 3PL stuff that's on Landstar board because it's too much to cover here. But I was thinking about that situation we had the other day uh, with one of our trucks, and um, we had to get and we get customer service involved. Uh, was that with the thing with the with the coffee makers or, or the ice? What it was the ice cream? It was a couple of, I think it was just, it was some countertop appliances. Mixers. I don't know. Mixers. Yeah. Countertop appliances of some sort. Um, we had a problem and we, we, we got customer service involved, you know, and they stepped in to help us, um, you know, it, uh, you had, Having that referee, having someone that I can call if there's a pro if I can't get a hold of an agent, I can call customer service in the middle of the night and they will wake somebody up. You know, um, they they will dig around and find somebody. But these there's so many of these little things that are intangible values that you get of things that you might only use once a year, but buddy, when you do, they're worth their weight in gold. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't want to sit here and act like everything's, you know, hunky dory and when, when we see everything through rose colored glasses. You know, Landstar is a big company like any other big company, and it certainly has its, you know, has its downfalls once in a while. But overall, when you when you stack it all up on that scale, the positives far, far outweigh the few negatives that go on. And in any in any in uh, in any organization that's as large as Landstar, you know, you're, there's going to be some bureaucracy and you're going to run into that once in a while. But the thing that the, the thing that most people who have trouble with Landstar, what causes that trouble is they fail to understand the relationship. You know, everybody that comes here for the most part, has been, they come from a fleet, they're, they're a company driver, they got a dispatcher and a, you know, and a load procurer and a safety director and all this support staff. And they hear the ads and they decide they want to, you know, go for it, buy a truck, come to Landstar and have that freedom. Okay. And you've heard me say this over and over again. The best thing about Landstar is freedom. The worst thing about Landstar is the freedom. Because if you don't have the discipline, and you don't have the skills 
and you don't have the, you know, the, the, you don't understand that you're now in business. You're not just a trucker anymore. You're a business owner and your relationship with Landstar is one business to another, not you're coming here and your Landstar is your employer. I, I, every day I read, I read it today, you know, talking about my job at Landstar. The only people that have a job at Landstar are the people that work in the office in Jacksonville. Everybody yep. else is an independent contractor. You know, I don't work for Landstar, you know, uh, I work with Landstar, but I understand that I'm I'm in control and I have to run my business and I cooperate with Landstar. We are in business together, but I don't expect them to do anything, you know, that uh, that I wouldn't do it with with any other company that I do business with. I mean, I do business with shops and lots of other places. OK, I don't look to them for HR services or, or any type of assistance. You know, and 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 Landstar doesn't have to doesn't provide that either. You know, we're you're not here. You you left that you left the diaper and and the stuff behind when you decided to step out and buy a truck, and 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 when you came to Landstar, you took your business and you brought it to do business at Landstar. You're not understanding that if you think that you come to work at Landstar. You know, the reason that you don't get a W two at Landstar is because you're not an employee. You're a 1099 independent contractor by law, by regulation. And, and, and with that comes all the responsibilities that you have of running your business. You know, now Landstar has a lot of help. You know, you get out here and you blow the motor up, you don't have any money. Landstar will lend you the money. OK, um, you know, during the pandemic, when rates were, you know, pretty bad, Landstar gave everybody a $50 bonus just to haul loads. You know, that's. That's just on them because they wanted to help out, but that's not because they're responsible for you or your business. You're responsible for that. So the people that come here and understand that, first of all, I don't want anybody telling me how to run my business. You know, a handout comes with uh, the other hand handing out, the other hand's asking for it back. And I don't want that. OK, um, I, 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 I'll take care of myself. Thank you. Uh, if I if I couldn't, I wouldn't be in business for myself, and I certainly wouldn't try to come here and do it. Landstar, There's plenty of places in this country you can go get a good trucking driving job, but that's what it is. It's a truck driving job. Here, it's not a truck driving job anymore. It's a place for you to take your business and 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 partner with a great, great, great organization, uh, but not as an employer. So, anyway, that's my little soapbox. I'll kick it over. Well, it's you. If you don't understand the industry itself, and I mean, I, I can't, in a way, I can't blame a lot of people because, as we have just found out, these companies don't even teach them how to read a map anymore, you know? And uh, I just lost you, Larry. Where'd you go? You went on a different screen. Well, I'm going to keep talking. Um, it, it It's it's that lack of basic understanding about how the industry works where you have to, uh, you have, to have that understanding, okay? And Landstar is an umbrella that works inside that system. And nothing you're going to do is going to change that relationship. You know, Larry has talked a lot about, you know, when you have a truck and you back up to the dock, when the, when the shipper rolls into the trailer, they can't tell if you're driving a 2005 or a 2015. And they don't care. They want, they see the inside of an empty trailer. They roll in there and they want to... Uh, load that stuff and hope that it's going to make it to its destination. They don't care if you drive for Landstar, or Swift, or Schneider. They don't care if you leased your truck, if you own your truck. It, none of that matters. N all of that is inconsequential to them. They just want you to serve them. And if you can have that servant's attitude, then your success is going to be that much greater because then you can say, okay, well, if I was the shipper, I would probably want this you know if i was the receiver i would want that 
um, if I was the agent or the broker. But we literally have we've gotten to be friends now with agents and and got to know them pretty well. And we get to hear them tell stories about how people won't return phone calls and won't tell them when they got loaded and they won't tell them where they're at. And uh, people seem to be incensed at the idea of having tracking on the load. You know, well, it's none of your business where I'm at. No, it, it's it's actually 100% their business where you mm-hmm. are. You have their product in your trailer. It's absolutely their right to know where you are. Um, you know, so if you come into this system without that fundamental understanding of just how the industry operates, it's going to be that much more difficult. Set aside how all the communication is through email or text or phone and it's not through your Qualcomm and and there's not somebody there to give you a routing or tell you where to get fuel. You have to make those decisions on your own. And, you know, we have to teach new people how to be problem solvers because you're going to have problems and things aren't going to line up. And you have to be able to connect the dots and say, okay, I'm here, I've got to be there, and then after there, I've got to be there, and I've got to be able to, to add all this stuff together and do the math and do the work to be able to get there on time. So true. So uh, so I was looking through. uh, We got some some comments. My first week at Landstar. Now, brother, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your name because I'm, you know, thank you for watching, but I'm not going to do you the disservice of trying to pronounce your name. My first week at Landstar, I've made mistakes, but I'm learning a lot so far. Well, brother, keep on going. That's how you got to do it. Uh... Dom J, new subscriber. I just tuned in live, so forgive me if it's already covered. How long after CDL training do I have to wait to work with Blue Ribbon Logistics and or Landstar? One year. Twelve months. Twelve months and one day. Um, you know, it, it's... Keep, uh, your nose, keep your nose clean. Yeah. you got to be 23. you got to be 23. Be 23 and one year with but, one, no, two tickets. No more than no more than two tickets. No more than two non DOT reportable accidents in the previous two years. And um, and over and to come to work for Blue Ribbon, but you have to do all that plus be a, interested in becoming a business owner, not a truck driver. So we got another comment here from Niven. Back when my father started with North America, North America in eighty one, he was getting fifty percent of the gross load. There were times when the customer paid cash and he had to do that very thing. He's talking about giving the money to the carrier. You know, we were, we were talking about if they had to give money to Landstar. Sure. Um, I've got plans. Y'all need to go subscribe to Smooth Operator Truck, and i got plans to get him on here because he's, he's an interesting dude. I think y'all like him. Um, <clears throat> so we've... I'm trying to. Th- I feel like there's something else we're not covering that we usually do about the Landstar system. Well, the 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 big thing the, I I talked about the reason that people don't make it at Landstar is because they don't understand their business. But here's the here's how to here's how to succeed at Landstar. Okay, is come here and develop a relationship with the agents. You know, people think they come here and they carry freight for a customer, and that's true. But that's not your customer. That's the agent's customer. You know, your customer is the agent. And the sooner you realize that and the sooner that you treat that agent as your customer, not as your enemy, the 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 quicker you're going to make it here. People that have been here, you know, we, there are people that have been laying out for years, years and years and years. OK. And then we have a we have a couple of new guys on Facebook all the time that go, well, Landstar ought to make them have to give that freight back on the low board. So everybody's got access to it, you know. Well, that that's not exactly how the free market work, works now, does it? You know, that'd be like saying, OK, McDonald's, y'all got to start all over again and just with run restaurants. So I've got a chance to compete with you. You know, that's complete horseshit. OK, so if you've been here 25 or 30 years and you have a a black book full of agents that love you and want you to do their freight and they call you and never put the, the freight on the board, that's not something you develop. That's that's not. Landstar didn't do that. You did that. Okay. I sound like Obama now. Okay. Y'all didn't build that. 
But you, you know, that's 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 what makes this work. That's why the the opportunity is there, guaranteed. The results are not, because there's some people that will do that, and they'll never look at the low board again. You know, uh, agents will call you. You get the loads that never touch the board. You get, but it's, it's because we've got a guy that's been here about a year with us. Okay, he has got. He's he figured it out. OK, he has yep. got it figured out. All right. I look at him. <laughs> and I'll go. He only have a load, you know, and then and 10 minutes later, he's booked up for the week. And it's with the same yep. agency he booked up last week or the week before, you know. And so it's like uh, th and that's what makes it work. You know, this kid, this guy is home every weekend in North Carolina. OK, does eight to 10 grand a week, you know, in revenue every week. And, and it's, he's been here a year, you know? Yep. So it, it, uh, he, he gets it. All right. But he gets it because you should see the emails. You should see his email change with every agent he does, you oh, know, yeah. every, every load, you know, complete accountability, leaving the shipper, you know, and, and even yeah. stuff like, and, and, and the, the last email in the chain will be great job, Seth. I can't wait yep. to get you another load. Yep. I mean, that's just how it is. That's what makes you work at Landstar and make that. That's where the big bucks are at Landstar. Now, you yeah. know, the, the low board gets you started, introduces you. It's an, it's just an advert. It's a billboard. It's an advertisement. But where you take that is how well you develop that relationship with that agent. And, you know, and, and again, every one of them, you're not going to like some of them. A lot of them are not, not going to like you. That's fine. There's plenty yep. of others. OK, you're going to find some that have the kind of freight you want to haul. They, they've got the personality you like, you know, whatever. But that's what you have. That's the secret to being successful at Landstar. OK, now, the other thing is like any business and you, I'm big on this, but you got to keep your cost down and minimize your risk. That's just business. But, you know, it, and, and, and the reason for that is just look back at March. OK, look back at March. You know, we hauled freight in March at a buck a mile, made money, didn't lay anybody off, actually expanded. A lot of people went home. Yep. And the reason we did that is because our cost of doing business is very, very, very small. But that's the lunatic in our in our system. That, and if you want to learn about that, you can listen to some of our podcasts before this one. But. I don't believe in going in debt to buy a truck. I don't believe in going in debt for anything. Certainly don't believe in coming to Landstar on your very first truck is something you go buy off of a freight, off a freight liner dealership, you know, or even worse, a Kenworth or Peterbilt deal, a dealership. You know, you go buy a used truck, you pay cash for it, you come here and you're not a slave to a truck. And then when things don't go very well, you're, you're fine. There's no pressure. You can't, you know, how many people can't go home for Christmas is coming up? There'll be a lot of ECOs can't go home. Because they can't afford to take off because they can't afford not to make the car the truck payment. So that's just stupid. I don't believe in doing stupid shit. And I say that all the time. And uh, the way to not fail in business is not do stupid shit and, and keep your risk low. There's no, there's no, the, the, your obligation to go in business. It's a, just a decision to go in business. It's a skill to stay in business. Okay. Yep. And you come to Landstar, you're in business. The, the trucking thing is not important anymore. Trucking is 10% of what you do every day. The other 90% is being in business and building relationships with these other businesses, which are these independent contractor agents. So if you want to understand how this works, that's how it works. Okay. And there's not a secret and it's not difficult or no complicated. It just, you just have to do the hard work. As my buddy, Kevin Rutherford says, you just got to do the hard work. It's all there is to it. Well, to what to what you were saying about cutting costs, we've got a question. Can you explain how the fuel discount works? Yeah, it's really really good. <laughs> <laughs> we, so, it's it's even easy. They they gave us an app. Chris, take it away. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So I'll I'll explain a little bit about the discount. So obviously now we didn't have this until what about a year ago? Yeah. We have the Landstar One app that makes this super simple my six-year-old could find out where to buy fuel um you you open the app you select to sub show you the discount and the uh, uh the landstar discount and the uh the fuel tax and it shows you where the cheapest fuel is so here at landstar we have uh 
with TA and Petro, we get a cost plus, usually cost plus two cents or cost plus three cents. And then we get like 25 cents off a gallon at Flying J, uh, Pilot, and Loves. Plus the cash discount. It's about 31, 32%. Yeah. Or 32 cents. I mean, not per cent. Yeah. Off of the, off of the, pump <clears throat> price. off the pump so, price. Um, it's 25 off the cash price. So, right. Um, we have found, and it's just, you know, 99.9% of our fueling happens at TA Petro because the cost plus beats uh, 25 cents off the cash price. Just like almost, almost always. And if it, and if, and if Flying J or Loves does beat it, they might beat it by a penny. Um, but, you know, we're going to do another video. We've done this stuff before, but now that we've got this new software and we can do all, we got all these bells and whistles, makes it a lot easier. We're going to go back and redo some of our old episodes. So we need to get into fuel taxes and explain why you don't buy fuel based on where, what state you're in. You buy fuel where it is cheapest, period. You, you don't, you don't care. You don't get all wound up about the fuel tax. You buy the fuel where it's the cheapest. The Landstar One app makes that very simple. It, sh- it opens up, it looks where you are, green is good, and you go buy fuel there. Uh, but that's, I mean, that's really basically it. It's just we get this volume discount, and it generally shows up more at TA and Petro than it does at the other places. But that, that's pretty much it. So if you're not using the Landstar One app, go download it in your app store and log into it with your Landstar credentials and start looking for cheap fuel. And even if you don't, okay, the way the way fuel discount works is that, you want to try to buy fuel where it's the cheapest. You know, I mean, it's, that's the first thing. Now, you know, we can we can find the price of fuel through various sources, but then you have to know what the discount is that Landstar has negotiated, and that's where the app comes in. Um, so, um, and it's very, very difficult to figure that at TN Petro because the cost plus, you actually had to, there's an 800 number you have to call, and you have to know the location code of the, of the, TA you're going to and it's it's kind of a you know it's kind of pain in the ass yeah. but this this Landstar one app is just simplified that and 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 look guys we don't that's free we don't pay for that we that one app they just gave it to us you know so it's um well I guess we paid 35 percent for it Chris I'm not sure maybe we did you know yeah but uh but it's uh, it's a nice tool and that's how it works and, and it, it's and it's substantial it's substantial you know um I think I paid a uh, buck fifty six when I stopped in Greensboro the other night. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, a dollar fifty six wholesale price for fuel, I'll take that all day long. You know, it's um, and just nobody else can beat it. You know, I mean, just just mm-hmm. the just the fuel and tire savings alone is enough to make it worth it. Not you know, it's just. Well, let's talk business a second. In in the trucking business, one truck, one owner, one driver, or even with us, nine trucks, fuel is our number one expense. Number one expense. Okay. So the fuel discount is significant because you're cutting the cost of your number one expense. And so that penny he's talking about makes a difference. It you You know, the average truck, for us, we spend about $50,000 a year average per truck and fuel. So if we can save a couple of pennies on every gallon over a course of a year, that makes $5,000 or more. You know, I don't know about you, but I would rather have the 5,000 instead of uh, what's the dude down in Tennessee that owns Pilot Flying J? Halsam. Jim, Jimmy Halsam. Yeah. Haslam. 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 Yeah. I damn for sure don't want to give it to, give it to him, you know? So, um, <laughs> You know, it, 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 why pay more for something you don't have to, you know, another thing with fueling is there's a strategy there, you know, people typically in this business, you know, they think, well, it doesn't matter. I'll just fuel when I need it. Well, we don't teach that. We fuel, you fuel when the fuel's cheap. Okay. Whether you need it or not, it's an inventory. Okay. Right. Why pass it up for a buck 50 something? And when you can load up with a couple hundred gallons and then be run out at, at the end of the day and have to pay $2 for it. And it sounds like an exaggeration, but it's not. I, I've seen fuel 50 cent a, a gallon difference between one corner of an exit and the other, you know. So it's uh, it, it does make a difference. And it's very important that you watch it, you know. 
Uh, we teach our guys to look every day, look at the route. And whatever the cheapest fuel is on that route, they can go fill up, you know. Um, doesn't matter what, whether you need it or not. That You know, you buy low and sell high, right? Everybody knows that. Well, we want to buy when, it's, when the fuel is low. And that's just when you do it. And it's a, it's it's planned, not just, well, I need fuel. I'm going to stop over here and get it, you know. So how do you do it? Little things like that make the difference, you know. Well, um, got, hey, he's got another question you can answer. I just right. started with Landstar, so please excuse me. No, it's fine. You're excused. <clears throat> when you when do you see the fuel savings? I have fueled at TA so far. Uh, I'm, I'm a, am I supposed to see it at the pump or on the settlements? Neither one. You're going to see it on your card activity statement. So every week on the on your settlement day, you're gonna if you if you go onto the Landstar. Um, online portal and you go to uh, direct documents, you're going to find your, your settlement contractor statement. Okay. If there'll also be one called card activity statement, that's where you're going to see your discounts. Okay. It won't be on your truck settlement. Okay. But it'll be on your com data card statement. Now I don't do it this way, but I know some people can get onto the fleet, advanced app, Chris, maybe, and can yeah. see it immediately. Yeah, I just yeah. wait and get the statement. You know, I don't, but you can see it immediately. If you go on, if you go to the, go to the com data app, you got to set up a password and whatnot and get in there, but you can see it right after you fuel, you know? So, um, uh, but it, it, uh, if you use the Landstar one up, you'll know what it is. You'll just see proof of it when you look at that settlement or that yeah. statement. I'm sorry. So, I, I'm, I'm, I'm making a note here that I, I think, we need to do a, we need to have you do a video about accounting for, for people that, you know, to like go through the Landstar online system for BCOs to know how to, cause I mean, there's lots of stuff in there. People have absolutely no clue that it's there. Sure. Um, so we got another question here. Do you recommend negotiating for more pay on every load? If so, is it better to negotiate the fuel surcharge instead of the line haul? Since you would get 100 percent of your service, see my man. Is that Niven? Is that Niven? That's Niven. that's 100 percent Niven. Yes, yes, and yes. I mean, first of all, it, again, this relationship thing. Okay, if you're dealing with your guy, you know, you're there's you're not going to negotiate with him. Okay, you guys, he, here's the load. We've we've done this load 48 times. We know exactly what's going to be. But if you're with a new agent, sometimes you can't look. It, it all comes down to this, okay? First of all, the first thing you need to be aware of is that you need to look and see whether this is a direct customer or not, okay? It's more than likely going to have some negotiation room in if it's not a direct customer, okay? Now, except, they hear me give an exa exa example of when that might not be true. If it's not a direct customer, it's coming off a broker board, okay? A lot of times, the, the price is not even set on the broker board. The agents put the load in our board. He uh oh, I just lost Larry. Let's see if I can get him back. Well, while he's trying to get back, so I'm going to finish that. So if you're <clears throat> a, a a load on the Landstar board, a posting is really nothing more than an advertisement, right? That it's it's I need a truck, okay, and I have access to the system that gets me in contact with Landstar trucks. OK, now, if I have if I'm an agent and I have a direct customer um, with Acme Widget Company and I've gone in there and I've negotiated a contract with them, um, I can uh, put I know what it pays because we negotiated the rate. It's two dollars and eighty five cents a mile plus fuel, whatever. Well, I know exactly when I put it in there and it's direct and I'm looking and I pop it up and it says it pays twenty five hundred dollars. That's what it pays. I mean, it's. There's no room for negotiation because everything is set in the contract. However, if I am a uh, an agent and I'm looking at truckstop.com or the DAT load board and I see a load, um, and I you know it goes from Kansas City to Charlotte, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get that load. OK, but I can't call that broker and say, I want this load if I don't have a truck. I need a truck. So how am I going to get a truck? I am going to 
uh, post on the Landstar board, and I'm going to say I have a load. I think I can get it for fifteen hundred bucks. Okay. Um, if I can get it for fifteen hundred bucks, um, I've got to get a driver to call me. So I've got to put it on the board for some kind of rate th that I can get somebody to call me. The phone's got to ring. Okay. So. I see a load, or maybe I have, maybe I'm a third party agent and I've got a relationship with somebody at C.H. Robinson. C.H. Robinson sends me an email. Hey, I got this load from Kansas City to Charlotte and it pays $2,000. Um, I'm going to put it up. Okay. Now, my phone's going to ring. It's going to be me and I'm calling. Hey, I see you have this load from Kansas City to Charlotte. Yeah. And if they say, let me, let me check with the customer, that tells me. It's not their direct load. It It's a load that they have gotten from some 3PL, C.H. Robinson or J.B. Hunt or Schneider or whoever. They're going to call and say, I have a truck, uh, and we'll do it for $2,000. And they're either going to say, yeah, that's fine, or they'll say, no, listen, we're only paying seventeen fifty. Well, they're going to get back with me and say, yes, the load is good, but they only want to pay seventeen fifty. At that point, I can say yay or nay. I might say, no, that's not enough. Or I might say, yeah, that's good enough. I'll take it. I just need a load. You know, I, maybe I've got a really good load over there out of the Carolinas. I just need to get back. I have the option to say no. I, and, and sometimes I will say no. Um, so negotiating, it's not a black or white thing. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. You might... They, they might say, well, we'll, may well, we'll put some loading, you know, some loading or unloading pay on there. We call that a sweetener. Sometimes they'll do that. Or, you know, sometimes they can't manipulate the fuel surcharge because Landstar publishes what the, uh, what the, the national fuel rate is, and that's what you're going to charge, you know. But it comes down to your relationships. I have hauled loads that were not Landstar direct customers um, and made great money off of them. You know, C.H. Robinson, I've made, I, I got a $4 and something. I got a cold call, which BCOs never answer cold calls, ever. And the phone rings one day, and I answer it. And she's like, hey, are you looking for a load? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, I got this one. And I'm like, what's it pay? You know, and she's like, 425 a mile. I'm like, hell yeah. Book it. Book it right now. You know, so you just can't say, well, I'm only going to haul direct freight. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Look, we have a cost structure. I know that. And in this market, it's, we've changed it at 1400 bucks. Um, a load's got to pay 1400 bucks. I got to load it today and unload it tomorrow. That's my criteria. If it pays at least 1400 bucks, I can pick it up today and deliver it tomorrow. I'm good. You know, if it pays $2,000 and it picks up today and delivers tomorrow, I'm really good. You know, um, so I don't, I don't get, I don't get so bogged down in the weeds on some of the smaller details. You know, I'm not going to turn a load down because the fuel surcharge isn't good enough. You know, hell, I just booked a load. Uh, oh God, I booked so many loads, but you know, she's like, she's really got trepidation in her voice. She's like, now, you know, this contract fuel surcharge is really bad. It's only like $20. So, you know, we raised up the line haul really high and I'm like, whatever, I, the load was like eighteen hundred dollars and picked up today and delivered tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm just not going to get so bent out of shape. I'm not looking for reasons not to haul a load. I'm looking for reasons to haul a load. If it fits in my trailer, I'll haul it. You know, I, I also don't get bent out of shape about weight. You know, uh, my truck can haul about forty four. I'm I don't want to haul forty four every day. But if I'm in a place and I need a load and it's 44 and it checks all the other boxes, I'm going to put it in the trailer. Let me see if I got Larry back. I'm back. You're back? Okay. I'm back when I'm on my phone. Oh, okay. Well, he's My laptop hey. died. I didn't have a cord down here. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Well, well I'm proud of you for, uh, you know. How about that? How about yeah. my IT? How about my IT expertise getting back? <laughs> yeah. Getting back? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that'd work. Um, so I, I just, I finished up answering Nevin's question. We, we're going to do more videos you, and break a lot of this stuff down because. Did, did you talk about sweetener? I did. Okay, good. I did. So, 
uh, I, I just said that I'm not looking for reasons really not to haul a load. I'm looking for reasons to haul a load. And if it checks all the boxes, I'm going to haul it. You know, it, it's I'm looking for a load with a minimum amount of rate for per day. And if it if it matches all that, I'm going to haul it. You and mean you're not going to wait? You're not going to wait till tomorrow and see if a better load comes along? <sighs> no. You're not going to wait till Wednesday and no. see if I wait for that good load? No, I'm not. Uh, I, now I will tell you this. A lot of times when I book a really good load, I immediately shut off, either shut off or, or modify my load alert. Cause the next load coming in is going to pay 50 cents more on the mile and be 10,000 pounds lighter. You know, that never fails, but, uh, no, I don't, I don't, I, I just, I'm not looking reasons to not do business. And, and I don't like living in a truck. You know, I want to, I want to get my truck loaded. I want to haul at least four or five loads a week and I want to go home. You know, come home and see my family. That's that's what I'm here. Uh, so see, kind of. So minimum daily revenue. That's a good question. Um, in a normal market, ours is twelve hundred fifty dollars a day, gross, all in. You know, uh, before Landstar, any of these calculations are done, we've raised that in the current market to fourteen hundred, uh, just because we can get it. And and I'm looking for eighteen hundred. I'm looking for two thousand or twenty two hundred. But that's but. based on your cost structure, okay? Correct. That's based on our cost structure, all right? So if your cost structure is much higher than ours, then your revenue day revenue may, may have to be higher. But here we go. Here's it, 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 what comes first, chicken or the egg, all right? I would tell you that just because the daily revenue will support a high cost structure doesn't doesn't say doesn't excuse you to have one you know if you've got a low cost structure first of all you'll have many many more loads available to you think about it if there's 30,000 loads on the load board how many of them meet the 1400 criteria how many of them meet a thousand criteria okay well if your cost structure causes you to have to have the 1400 in order to pull the load you have a lot fewer loads open to you than, than someone who has a thousand dollar per day cost structure. So the 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 goal here is to keep cost, cost structure, structure as low as you possibly can. can. Sorry, that was me. That was him. That was so, me. Sorry. And that way, when the market is, you know, we can function at a twelve twelve fifty revenue day easily everybody makes money my drivers make really good money i do very very well but right now we're doing 1400 doesn't mean we have to have it but the market supports that right now so now we're doing we're cashing right now okay we can go back to 12 we can go back to a thousand you know and still make money but we adjust that with the with the market just because we want to take advantage of the market when we can yeah so it's hard to answer that question because it all depends on what your cost. Look, there's a number that everybody needs to know. Okay. It's your cost per mile. You have to know that number. Okay. You can't be in business and know what the cost, not know what your cost of goods or services are. And if you're a truck driver, you have to know what does it cost me every mile to drive this truck? Then you can answer that question that you just asked me. What's your minimum revenue? I don't know. That's what ours is. But our cost structure is really, really low. So, Well, why don't you touch on, you know, you said that in orientation. I never heard you put it that way about a, a money that you save, you get to keep 100% of. Whereas, you know, trying to generate more revenue, there's a cost to that. Well, there's only two ways to increase your your earnings in a business. There's only two ways. You either have to increase the amount of money that comes in or increase your revenue, or you have to decrease, decrease the money that goes out or your expenses or your cost. So <clears throat> the, the, um, the first way that most people think about is, well, I just need to sell more stuff. You know, um, department stores, they have a sale. Let's sell more stuff. Okay. Uh, and that that's good, except that your everything you do selling more stuff. Also, there's a cost to that. 
you know, in trucking, typically, the way you increase your revenue is you just drive more miles, especially if you're not at Landstar and you work, you know, you're, you're paid by the mile. Um, so, but driving more miles, all that money is not just revenue. Your cost structure is in there. So you drive another mile, you make another dollar and a half, but your cost might be a dollar. So out of that dollar and a half, you kept 50 cents. Okay. If you look at it the other way, instead of raising your revenue, lower your cost. If you, if you drop your cost per mile a dollar and a half, it's a dollar and a half. <laughs> you get it all. Okay. There's no cost that comes out of, of lowering your cost. So it's much more efficient, much more effective to increase your earnings by lowering your cost than it is to raise your revenue. Now, obviously, it's okay to do both. But raising your revenue without lowering your cost only gives you a portion of what you raised, whereas lowering your cost gives you 100% of what you cut. Make sense? Yep. Yep. Well, uh, I think we have pretty much covered it for now. We, we got more. We can break a lot of this stuff down in more, especially fuel taxes and, um, you know, accounting, um, you know, modifications, you know, cause that what he, what he's just talking about with, with lowering costs, you know, we, we buy really expensive tires, uh, but the money that we save, uh, in fuel or, uh, you know, with the OPS and the, and the oil and the air filters and the mufflers and all the things that we do to our trucks, we, they, we have to, we have an initial expenditure, but we get that money back and, and then a lot more. So I think we've done enough to, uh, to do it for now. So we'll hand this off. I'm going to, um, I'll put our, emails sorry about all here. the technical issues, but, uh, we're, we're still trying to figure this new software out. And, yeah, uh, I'm real. I really like it. We just got to get some of the bugs worked out. So, you can send us an email, Larry at Blue Ribbon Logistics dot com, Chris at Blue Ribbon Logistics dot com. Uh, just go hey, Chris, to the website. One, go ahead. One last thing, Chris. You know, uh, for you guys that have listened for a while and and you heard us say that uh, we just don't have any trucks. Well, that's not true. We got a couple right now. So if you've been listening for a long time and thought about taking this opportunity to come and learn with us here. Uh, we now have a couple of trucks we can seat. So uh, let us know, you know, I guess we're hiring, I guess. As long yep. as you're not a truck driver, we're hiring. If you want to become a business owner and learn how to do this and make lots of money, uh, we'll be, we'll be glad to share that, uh, how to do that, you know? Um, yeah. So let Just us go know. To the, go to the website, click drive for us. And there's a form you can fill out and we'll get in touch with you and do an interview and see where it goes from there. And uh, with that, I'm going to go get ready to do some truck driving tomorrow. So thank you, everybody, right. for watching and, and uh, check back with us for the next episode. Everybody be safe out there.